Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. In this tutorial, we will give you quick tips to create a public space site diagram as deadlines approach. It will only take you 10 minutes to create a scene like this, with the tips you will learn. For this video, we've downloaded the site model from CAD Mapper. If you don't have a site model, you can easily download it from there. Then we added a few details to the 3D model, such as roofs and window openings. If you want to learn how to add these elements with SketchUp extensions, be sure to check out our axonometric section drawing tutorial. In there, we explain the use of each extension thoroughly. Now back to our site model. Firstly, we'll adjust our scene and get it to DPDF export. Then, we'll add a new scene from Window Scenes and add shadows to our model. You can go to Window and open Shadow Properties to adjust the darkness and angle of the shadows. Once you're okay with it, go to View, Edge Style, and uncheck Edges. This way you'll only have the shadows for exporting. We'll export as PNG, make sure the transparent background is checked in the options. We've opened the PDF export in the Illustrator. We'll set the artboard size and center our public space to the artboard a little more. Then, we'll quickly delete the excess parts. To delete them neatly, you can draw a rectangle, select all and click Shape Builder tool, click on the excess lines while holding the Alt key. This way you can split and delete. Then you can change the color and stroke weight of the lines. Make sure to check the round cap and round join options from the strokes panel. To color the scene, we'll go to Object, Live Paint Make. Your Live Paint group is ready. For coloring, We'll choose a soft gray. Then we'll select the Live Paint Bucket tool from the toolbar. To color every surface in a group, you'll need to click the group three times. We'll make the roads a tone darker. And some of the roofs too. Once we've done with the environment, we'll focus on the public space design. We'll draw the outlines with the pen tool. As we've mentioned in the intro, this tutorial is to give an idea for diagrams you can make in a limited time. Therefore, we quickly add some outlines for seating areas and green areas. Use Shape Builder tool to erase excess parts. By copying this shape, you'll be creating an elevated seating area. We've done with the shapes for now, let's add a bike lane, a must-have for urban site diagrams. We draw quickly with the pencil tool. The best thing about pencil tool is that you can go over it again and again and manipulate the line form. Don't forget to work with layers to organize your drawing. We'll send the bike lane below the buildings, and we give thickness to it. We'll quickly readjust our public space. Once we're happy with how it turned out, we'll go ahead and adjust the artboard size again to focus on the center more. Again, we use Shape Builder tool to delete excess parts. Now, we'll add three dimension effect to the public space elements. We'll select the seating area, go to Effect, 3D and Materials, 3D Classic, Extrude and Bevel. From there, you can adjust the angle and depth of your 3D shapes. We'll repeat the same steps for all the public space elements. We'll adjust their angles and depths using extrude and bevel options. We'll use coral and burnt orange tones for this illustration, and we'll start coloring the bike path. You can also add three dimensions to the bike lane. You can use the offset path command for this. By adding white outlines, we'll create a perception of a curb. Don't forget to add dashed lines for the lanes. To add quickly, we've copied the lane, turned fills to strokes, then we've colored it white and lowered its stroke weight. To split the excess lines, you can also use the scissor tool, 
Click where you want to cut the lines and then delete. After that, we'll choose the dashed line option from the strokes panel. Lastly, we'll add a stroke to the curb also, and the bike lane is done. The detail level is up to you, but we'll show you how to add the most detail in a short time. We'll add realistic ground texture. Vector pattern swatches are very useful. You don't need to cut them like texture images. You'll just apply it to a surface and set its scale. As we did with all of the urban elements, we'll add a white border with the offset path to the rest of them. This strengthens the 3D perception of the scene. For all, select the surface, click offset path, and choose white for the fill color and gray for the outline. Then, we'll copy the surface and paste it in place, send it back, and increase its scale, it will become a ground texture for urban furniture. We will repeat the same steps, but this time we'll bring it to the front and lower its scale, these parts will represent the green areas. Lastly, let's add a wood tile pattern to the seating area. You can adjust the pattern properties with edit pattern button. Strokes should be thinner on this scale. Once you have done, go to transform and select rotate to adjust the pattern's angle. We can add our shadow export. We'll change its opacity blend mode to multiply and send it to the bottom layer. Now we can export it as JPEG to add vegetation and people brushes to the scene in Photoshop. We'll open the JPEG export of the scene in Photoshop. To open the brush library, go to Window, Brushes. Here, you can see the preset brushes. If you want to expand your Photoshop brush library, you can check out our marketplace. Visit Tafa's store to get these and many more high-quality Photoshop brushes to use in your architectural representations. To get the brushes used in this illustration, the links are in the description box below. Once you've downloaded the brushes, you can select them from the brushes panel. You'll see a preview of the brush on the artboard before you applied it. Based on this preview, you can adjust its scale to fit perfectly. You can also change the opacity and color of the brushes. Brushes are amazing alternatives for vector scales when you have a lot of work to do in a limited time. They are easy to adapt to your project. After we've finished with the vegetation, we'll add people's silhouette brushes. You can also mix and match different brushes smoothly. Here. We'll use silhouette brushes along with cutout image brushes. The scene is almost done, we'll just export it as JPEG to add a few finishing touches in Illustrator. We'll add text bubbles to write any urban strategies or information about the site we'd like to highlight. And that's it. We hope you found this quick tutorial useful. What other tutorials would you like us to cover? Feel free to share it with us in the comments. Until next time.